We Dana led from Hikeaholics decided to hike the Höge Kustelede, translated as the High Coast Trail. Located at the east coast of Sweden, this region has the world's highest coastline. The 130 kilometer long High Coast Trail stretches through an entire World Heritage Site that shares its name. We are starting in Örnsköldvik and ending in Horneberget. The trail is divided into 13 sections that are a unique mix of coast and forest with special areas like Skuleskoga National Park and Skuleberget, where the ancient coastline is currently a total of almost 300 meters above sea level. We are hiking through deep forest and mountaintop viewpoints, passing beautiful lakes that you only see in Sweden and sleeping in beautiful places along the way. Nowhere else in Sweden can you hike at these heights so close to the sea. Welcome to the Höga Kustenleden. Welcome at the east coast of Sweden. Yes, right now we're in Örnsköldsvik and we're hiking the high coast trail, the Höga Kusteleden. And well, before we start, we already want to apologize to all the Swedish viewers because we have absolutely no clue how we pronounce Ernst, the Swedish Ernst names. Örnsköldsvik. Örnsköldsvik. Yeah. We're gonna hike from Örnsköldsvik to Örneberget. 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 130 kilometers on the high coastal trail. We're really excited. Weather forecast is not that great actually no but we're just gonna see and the trail is about to take like five till seven days and yeah let's go for it let's go The coastal trail contains 13 stages and right now we finished stage 1, that was only 5 kilometers. That's still Svetje. <laughs> and from now we're in stage 2, from Svetje till Sandlogan. So somewhere in this second section we will find a place to camp.
so slight change of plans. We originally wanted to camp here, but so far all the soil where we bought was completely drenched in water because the water levels are really high because it rained like crazy the last couple of days. So we actually walked by a little cabin for two people, which was completely empty. So we're very happy. So we're staying here tonight. There are two beds and there's a little sign that we think you have to flip that you say occupied or not occupied, but not bad for a first night. Following a satisfying first day, the moment had come to think about the days ahead while getting ready to cook dinner in this charming hut. <laughs> Delicious. Is it working? Yes, but a little bit too good. <laughs> I already burned my marshmallow. Logan and we started this morning I think somewhere around here so we already hiked 11 ish kilometers and right now we're going to the nature reserve called Bale Sudden a little lunch. Let us have a, a linsen, lins, lentil? Lentil soup. Lentil. Linse is it in Dutch so that you know guys. Um, this morning the hike was not that beautiful actually. We had a very long rope walk, rope walk and rope walk. Was I think it was about 10 or 11 kilometers of rope walking. Yeah and it's now 12 o'clock and now we're actually at a lake, a beautiful spot. So it's supposed to be really beautiful from here. There is a village in about seven kilometers where we can do some resupplies and from there we can look for a next camp spot.
So we decided to switch to the GoPro because it is still pouring rain out here and it doesn't seem to stop, unfortunately. No, the whole sky is gray and we can see some shadows of hills far <laughs> away. <laughs> but far, we're not far sure. Away. <laughs> yeah, so I think we still have six kilometers to go to the next cabin and there should be a campsite as well. So yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Some sunglasses. <laughs> Hi, Kahalics. Oh. <laughs> Very rainy. Is your campsite? Not yet. We made a little detour for some food because online we saw this burger and we were like, okay, let's go. Well deserved after a rainy day. We just had an amazing burger, right? Oh my God, it, it was even better than it looked on the photos on Google. And the staff there are super, super nice. And we had like some Swedish lessons and now we are going to find a place to sleep. Yes, and we met a guy inside the restaurant who uh, stays at a cabin tonight. He promised us that he's gonna build a fire for us, so we couldn't say no to that. Yeah. So we're staying in a cabin tonight and it's not that bad actually because it's still raining, it's very windy and cold. Yeah. So we're warming up over there and then tomorrow we have a fresh, fresh day. Over there is the little red cabin. Oh, there, no, this is surf stuga, so that's like the rest stuga. And there are six beds. Good morning. Good morning. We already packed our stuff. Some parts are still really, really wet because it rained crazy yesterday. But we met a guy in a restaurant yesterday and he started the fire over here and we slept here with like three bunk beds for six people and it's a really, really good cabin to stay. And this cabin is located next to a harbor and when you pay 50 crowns, that's about five euros per person, to the harbor you can get a hot shower and a nice toilet and a kitchen and everything equipped with it. So it was a good night. We're now at Skulleskogen National Park and we are at the north entrance. The plan for today is first to check out this camp area, but that's already in half an hour, so that's way too quick. And then we have a hike up, 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 up to a beautiful lake here. And there's a cabin and a campsite as well where you can build a fire. That is where we're gonna spend the night. And tomorrow is one of the highlights of this national park. Let me see if I pronounce it right. It's the Slotsdal Kurvan. 
And I think crevant means a crevasse. It's like a big mountain crevasse slash cave where you can walk through. We wanted to fly the drone there, but unfortunately it's not allowed to fly the drone in this national park. So no drone for us, but we're still really excited for this national park. Right now we arrived at the place we want to stay. We wanted to camp initially, but well, all the places where you could camp, it's completely wet because it rained crazy the last couple of days. Um, so we decided to stay in this cabin. It's a really cool cabin. Uh, there are four bunk beds here. Well, two bunk beds, four beds. And the view is amazing because we're right at the lake. The hike today was really beautiful though. We had a steep climb in the beginning. We passed a beautiful waterfall a beautiful lake as well and we absolutely saw nobody on the trail we felt like we were the only ones there so we spent the night here and tomorrow is one of the highlights of the high coast trail the beautiful cave with the rock walls on the side so we're really looking forward to that now we're gonna spend the night here have some nice dinner and a warm sleep <laughs> On almost every cabin in Sweden that are free cabins, there's a stove with a fireplace where you can make your own fire to heat up the cabin. And you can roast some marshmallows. Already bringing these for four days, <laughs> so it's time to eat them. Morning! It's a beautiful day today. Yesterday and the day before it was raining like crazy but today we woke up with a clear blue sky. It's quite chilly and windy but it's logical when the weather is this great. 
we woke up with a beautiful sunrise at the lake and now we're packing our things today is the last day in the national park over here today we're going to the crevasse the beautiful cave from there it's about 15 kilometers to the next town where we'll resupply and where we're gonna spend the night We were the only ones in this beautiful place and had lots of time to explore the peaceful surroundings. But Skuleskogen National Park had more for us. Come on baby, take a leap of faith. So we just arrived at our campsite and it was a beautiful, very sunny day. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, and right now we pitched our tent in a little village and it's next to the Skulesberget, one of the highlights of the Höke Küstelede that's almost 300 meters high, the highest coastline in the world. And probably tomorrow we will climb that one, right? Yes, because the original trail doesn't go over the mountain, but just past the mountain. So today we passed the mountains and we quickly pitched our tent because we know tomorrow will be a very good day as well. So the plan is to go very light, leave one backpack here, pack one bag very light, go up the mountain, go back here, pack our stuff and continue the trail. And now it's time to have some dinner and then we will have an early night of sleep. Good morning. 
As you can see, I'm hiking solo at the moment. Ever since we finished the TMB a couple of weeks ago, Aletta's knee is really aching. And at first during this trail, there were no problems with her knee, but yesterday with quite a demanding and rocky trail, her knee started aching again, which is not nice, of course. And we thought she would recover this night, but we didn't have uh, a really good sleep last night, to be honest. It was quite chilly and wet, but uh, unfortunately her knee is still aching at the morning. So I'm doing this detour by myself. Uh, like we mentioned yesterday, it's the Skullenberg detour, Skullenberget. I'm not sure how we pronounce it actually, but it's a 300 meter mountain. And halfway up a trail is a cave. And that cave uh, was used by robbers in the past. So let's see how it goes. The weather is really beautiful. It's now 8.30 and it should take me about two to three hours. Then going back to Aletta, she is at the tent to recover and we'll see from there. Right behind me is the robber's cave and the other side behind me, the view is incredible. I think it took me half an hour to get up here and it was a pretty fun trail to be honest. It was steep and rocky, but very doable. There were some ladders and steel cables, but not that big of a problem from here. I think it's 15 minutes to the top. I made it to the top and it was quite beautiful, really beautiful. And I would recommend this detour if you're hiking the high coast trail like we are. Normally the trail goes underneath the mountain, but there are a couple of trails that lead upwards the mountain. Like this is the cave trail and you have the south trail, the east trail. So multiple options. A couple of tips if you're hiking the cave trail, don't hike it down because some parts are very slippery and steep. And one tip, maybe leave your heavy backpack down because all the trails come to the beginning again. So leave your backpack there and just bring one easy day pack with light stuff to carry you up. So this is Skullebergert Nature Reserve. This is the whole mountain. This is where we stayed last night and where we camped and where Aletta is right now. I took this blue trail over here all the way to the other side of the mountain. Then I went up the steep climb towards the cave that's here. Further up the steep stairs, then I made it to the top. And from here my plan is to hike this blue trail down. It's quite an easy trail. Then take a side trail here, whoop, to the lake, back to Aletta. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm back at the campsite. I think this detour cost me two hours and I think it's a really recommended detour if you're hiking the high coast trail. It's really beautiful up there, beautiful views. The trail is quite spectacular as well. Now let's see how Aletta is doing over there. I was just packing all my stuff so and trying to dry the tent but still wet so hopefully the sandal does his work. Just a little behind the scenes of camping life. If you're camping and it's quite chilly in the night, like we need to dry our tent. So we kept the outside of the tent over there to let it dry. The inner tent is drying here. The sleeping bags as well, they got a little bit uh, damp on the, on the top, but these sleeping bags, whoa, they are incredible. On the Koenslede, we had minus six and they kept us warm all night. So, so far we're really happy with uh, with the brand Cumulus, very happy and the jackets are incredible as well. Happy, happy, happy. Alette is cleaning the inside of the tent, I think. Just packing the stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alette is packing the stuff while I'm preparing some coffee now. So we just packed everything and dried all our stuff and we're ready to go. Yeah, and today is quite a long day because it's 17 kilometers to Oelanger. That's the next town we want to go to. Um, and it's, well, yeah, there, a lot of roadwalks. There are yeah. quite a few roadwalks actually, but still there are some nice viewpoints along the way. So let's enjoy the day. day filled with road walking road walking and road walking we decided to check into a hotel to treat ourselves and Aletta's knee with a good night's rest good morning good morning, good morning. it's a very lovely day as well and we are feeling very energetic yesterday uh, we passed the halfway point which was magnificent and after a lot of road walks we uh, decided to reward ourselves with a hotel so a let us sneak and recover as well and we slept 11 hours yeah we slept a long time and my knee feels way better right now and that's good because today we have a 25 kilometer hike and that's also a lot of road walking but also in some forests as you can see behind us um, and today promises to be like one of the well unique selling points of the Hokakuste because we will pass lots of different villages and Hokakuste and seas and stuff like that which is really typical for this area yes and we had a very lovely and big breakfast so we're ready to go
Even though today we have a lot of road walking, we are passing through many beautiful Swedish villages and scenic viewpoints that truly capture the beauty of the high coast. This region embodies our vision of Sweden in every way. After a different but beautiful day along the trail, where we pass lots of villages and rocky beaches, we see the sign of the B&B in Gavik. This B&B has a campsite as well. We decide to stay here for the night and enjoy the beautiful views that the high coast has to offer. Good morning. Good morning. It's almost the last day. We have 33 more kilometers to go and we decided to split it in half, right? Yeah, that's true because uh, today it's still pretty good weather, the sun is shining, but tomorrow probably it's gonna rain again. In the end, we have two options. There is a tent site, I think in about 15 kilometers or 18 kilometers, not sure. And a little bit after that is a cabin option. And if we're too early at the tent site and we still have some sunny weather, we'll push forward towards the cabin. Thank you. 
After a very long and pretty exhausting day to be honest we made it and when we arrived at the original campsite it was way too early right yeah it was way too early and uh, we read the signs about the cabin up and it's supposed to be a beautiful view so we were like okay let's push it forward and let's go to the cabin the view from this cabin is amazing and one thing we can see the famous bridge over here where this trail finishes so we have one more day tomorrow and i think it's about 12 kilometers so a very short day now we're gonna build a fire make some dinner and have a good night of sleep Hey, Aletje. Hey. It's the final day. Woo! Yes, and we start with a beautiful morning in the cabin with an amazing view, although it was completely misty, but we know that was an amazing view. And so now we are declining from the detour and hopefully get back on the real track again. And then it's only, I think, 12 kilometers till the finish line. Right now we're back on the original trail of the Hoga Kustelede and the downhill was pretty cool, pretty amazing. The steep section are secured with ropes but you could do without ropes and it's pretty okay. It was a very cool detour, would really recommend this one. And there were also stairs, right? Yeah, and there were a couple of stairs as well, uh, long stairs, but it was a cool descent.
think still three kilometers to go and I think the rest is only road walking if I'm correctly and we can already see the top of the bridge the bridge over there in the bag it there's the finish And here we are, after hiking 130 kilometers through this incredible area of the high coast of Sweden. It was a journey that we will always cherish. We explored the magnificent Skulleskogen National Park, where we stayed in an absolutely beautiful cabin surrounded by nature. We saw the famous Lotsdalkravan, the towering wall of Skulleberget, and walked through some typical Swedish villages. And although the weather wasn't always perfect, and there was quite a bit of road walking, the natural beauty and the stunning coastal trails of this area more than made up for it. The High Coast Trail will always hold a special place in our hearts. This was the Höga Kustenleden. <laughs>